Joining us right now is the Assistant Secretary for Public Affairs at the Treasury Department. Tony Sayeg is here. Tony, good to see you. Great to be with all Thank of you. you. Good so morning. so much for joining us. So what do you think? I mean, there, we've got personal fights going on. John McCain, the president, Bob Corker, Jeff Flake. Are, you, are they going to be able to vote yes and get this tax reform bill across the finish line? Well, Maria, you know we've done a lot of work between the administration and Congress throughout the year to get to the point where we are now, where I can tell you we are extraordinarily well positioned to get tax reform done, both through through both chambers and on the president's desk for signature by Christmas. Uh, that's because we've agreed largely on the major framework items, middle income tax cuts, business rates that are the most competitive we've had in decades. In the case of small business, the, the most we've had in 80 years, the lowest we've had in 80 years. So we all agree on these things. We certainly hope as an administration there aren't going to be senators who take uh, kind of personal reasons to vote against tax reform. Uh, in the case of Ron Johnson, who has a very legitimate concern on the pass-through side, you know, we feel the Senate bill does a lot to address the pass-through rate for small and medium-sized businesses. Senator Johnson wants to focus on a few more. We're there with them in the conversation. We're going to get to a point where we do resolve a lot of these matters because we have worked all year to resolve the bigger ticket items, and now I think we're working through the rest of the bill. Yeah, but Tony, Dagan and I talking about it earlier, Susan Collins, she wants to keep salt in there. She wants to keep the salt deduction in there. She's talking about a 22% corporate rate? president said he's at the red line at 20. Yeah, and that's that's correct, Maria. We, we've clearly made it uh, the point that we want to have the most competitive rate on the corporate side. That's good for workers. That raises paychecks. That raises productivity, capital investment. All the things that we've not had uh, happening in our country, because we have a tax system on the business side that incentivizes our companies to defer their profits and keep them offshore instead of reinvesting them but here into to our country. Is there any room for negotiation there? She says 22 percent. president says 20 percent. Is, is there any budge on the corporate rate. 20 is so. the number. But the bottom line is the Senate version has a delay of that rate for a year. We're looking at that clearly. Um, and that's something the administration and Congress is going to have to work through. Everything else, though, uh, we understand in the Senate bill to be immediate. The expensing component, which everybody here understands, the power of that for businesses to be able to write off the expensing. 100% uh, for, five, for years. five years. That is a major stimulative part of this tax reform that I think people have to understand well, will Wall be Street, great for business. The Wall Street Journal editorial and page workers. pointed that out that the expensing offsets the one in part offsets the one year delay Correct. in the in the corporate tax cut. But one something that came up uh, over the weekend with just acquaintances here in the building, but just outside of work. Why aren't more business leaders being vocal about the necessity of this, mm. ab about the point. power of what you're doing on corporate tax reform? My what I said to a lot of people was the CEOs of these technology companies might love it, but they won't be vocal about it because they're, they fear <laughs> that it looks like they're supporting President Trump. Yeah, well, look, that, that's a fair point, Dagan, and there's certainly going to be politics at play. Uh, we actually think the business community uh, who understands the power of this for them to be able to reinvest in their workers, expand their businesses, expand the economy where more people get opportunity to be a part of it, I think we've gotten a ton of support. I, the President, the Secretary, Gary Cohn, uh, from our National Economic Council, I've been meeting with hundreds of business leaders for this past year. We've hosted many meetings at the White House with people from across industry groups, not just finance or, or other parts of what you know we know as the kind of Wall Street economy, but the Main Street economy, the manufacturers and, and others. So we understand that there is a huge appetite to see this type of stimulative legislation get through Congress and really create sustained economic growth or 3 percent and beyond, which is what this economy and this country is used to having and has not been able to because but of bad policy. But sadly, yeah. we, we do have this, what I call the Veruca salt economy, the I want it and I want it now, where if people don't see immediate benefit in their own pocketbook, then they don't understand the ultimate benefit by cutting corporate. Yeah, and meanwhile, the Senate wants to delay the 20 percent for a year. Right. Well, look, I'll say quickly on that point, we are cutting uh, taxes largely across the board for the vast majority of Americans, they're going to see significant rate cuts. They're going to see a much more simple and fair tax system that's going to make it much easier for them to get through the process of, of going through their federal taxes. And not that is, us, and that's not going people to be, in California, not people in New York, well, because yeah. you're Look, eliminating that deduction. But Maria Fairley, millionaires in New York and California will no longer, under the Senate version, now don't forget there's still a, a, a fix in the House and there's going to be a negotiation, but under the Senate version, millionaires in New York and California will not get a federal 
federal subsidy to offset the fact that they live in very high tax states. Don't get me started on that. Don't get me started. And that's a decision we have to make. No, 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 no. You keep using the word subsidy. New York gets back 81 cents on every dollar that we send to the federal fisc. So, and Connecticut's the same. New Jersey's even worse. Subsidy or deduction. Use the word you prefer. Don't act like we're takers. We're givers. The demographics. Six million people used that deduction in California last year or two years ago. Six million people. And very few of them make less than a million dollars. In fact, 80% of people who live in those states don't even take that deduction. And we're doubling the standard deduction. With the first 24,000 of a married family income, it is, is not going to be taxed. So this does not affect middle and upper middle income families. This affects a very narrow group of, of, of millionaires. Believe me, we prefer, obviously, to have taxes go down for everybody. But the focus has always been middle income tax cuts. And that's how you're going so to get it. Go is is ACA repeal going to end up in this bill uh, at, at the end of the day? Yeah. We feel that that it is uh, up to Congress, obviously, but the president has made it very clear that he'd like to see the individual mandate repealed. Over 80% of people who suffer under that mandate are middle and lower middle income families. That is a tax cut. Remember, that was passed in the Supreme it, Court. You can live without that it. Was, well, we want tax reform is a tax. Is the priority. It's a tax. It's absolutely. But it's saved by the repealing it. They save $318 billion. Correct. They've got to come up with that somewhere else if they don't repeal it. But, and what about all these expirations? Why should people be comfortable with all of these individual rates yeah, expiring? Yeah, after five years, they expire. Ten. So I, I will say this. If you look at history, there is absolutely no doubt that Congress continues the tax cuts that benefit so working they and middle income families. More, then they actually well, they, cost they, more than the But bill, Jonathan, let's, we welcome Democrats who want to join us right now to make it all permanent. We need eight of them. If they want to come on board and make middle income tax cuts permanent, this is their yeah, opportunity to do it. We have, we have, I'm saying we have fair a point. rule. It's a fair point. And we have an instruction, as you all know, to keep it within $1.5 trillion of a budget reconciliation. The corporate rates, if we want to do the magnifying cuts to help workers that we plan, cannot expire in 10 years. We're going from a worldwide to a territorial system. Mm -hmm. We're making massive changes on the corporate side to make sure they reinvest in workers and capital expansion here in America. You can't say, but that expires in 10 years. Whereas even with the Bush tax cuts, President Obama and Democrats voted to continue them. So there is certainly going to be relief in the future. So this is going to cost more families. than one and a half trillion. No, because we believe the stimulative effect of this growth is going to be outstanding. Where, are those, where are those numbers? The, we have two consecutive quarters without it, John, of over 3%. We're about to release reports from Treasury that will show you that our numbers are real. The Obama administration used to make projections of 4% Treasury uh, growth numbers. They didn't even break 2% Well, things are definitely quarters. getting better. We, so we know that. let's say that the trajectory is on, uh, on the right course. Let's